She makes me feel stable and at home. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 BFFs on RuPaul's Drag Race. I've always like struggled with my identity. For this list, we're looking at the most notable drag race queens throughout the franchise who formed close bonds on or off the show. Did your favorite BFFs make the list? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Brooklyn Heights and Vanessa Vanji Mateo. Or should we call them Brangie? Fans are always on the lookout for romance in the workroom. Sometimes some light flirting or a subtle glance is enough to get the imagination going. But these two season 11 queens left nothing to the imagination. The first time we saw Brooklyn and Vanjie kiss in Untucked, it was the smooch heard round the world, or at least round the workroom. From that moment on, the ship that was Brangie set sail in the hearts and minds of every Drag Race fan. Though the romance didn't last long past the season, their close bond provided us with some of the most touching and bittersweet moments. Vanjie, we're going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19, Ginger Minge and Kennedy Davenport. No one threw more shade and had a better time doing it than Ginger Minge and Kennedy Davenport. She never knows what she's gonna do. I don't think she expected to make it past week one because she hasn't been prepared for a look since then. And them draws is loose with them pads off. So. <laughs> These two members of the Bitter Old Lady Brigade had to say goodbye to their fellow sisters in shade, Mrs. Kasha Davis and Jasmine Masters early on. But Ginger and Kennedy made it deep into the competition together. The duo was polarizing because their targets tended to be fan favorites. We've shopped! <gasps> Ooh, Jaden, I just got a vision. You might be lip syncing for your life tomorrow, baby. But make no mistake, they were partners in crime throughout the season. They agitated drama like no one else, and season seven was all the better for it. Because do you know how much shit people are gonna talk about us once yeah. any of this airs? Yeah, well, you know, they talked about Jesus, so I'm ready. Number 18, Bimini Bon Boulash and Ginny Lemon. Out and proud non-binary vegan Bimini Bon Boulash didn't have many quiet moments on Drag Race UK season two. I'm vegan. <laughs> but Bimini showed fans a different side of them when they comforted fellow queen Ginny Lemon about their shared non-binary identity. The two had a very raw, very genuine, and very educational conversation about what it means to exist outside of the traditional gender binary. I'm still finding out who I am, as are you, and like we are still, and it's a struggle every day, and it's a battle every day. That it was two of the season's comedy queens drove the point home that much harder. We love to see queens cutting up and throwing shade, but sometimes it's the intimate and vulnerable moments that make us love them all the more. Thank you so much for sharing <laughs> that with you. me. I love you. I love you too. Number 17, Laganja Estranja and Gia Gunn. Is this one of the most iconic friendships in Drag Race history? Absolutely. My name is Miss Laganja Estranja, honey, darling. Laganja, y'all know tea. <laughs> Come on, Nat. These two clicked as soon as they entered the workroom. With Laganja's fierce dips and Gia's unforgettable catchphrases, this duo wasn't just a drag friendship made in heaven, they were reality TV gold. My name is Gia Gunn. I don't jump guns, I am the boom boom gun. Oh, is that it? Is that it? The on-screen friendship came to a sad end when Laganja's lip sync skills sent Gia home, but their friendship off-screen has only gotten stronger since season six. Now, sashay away. You guys are all still dudes. Both are super supportive sisters who tour together, do photo shoots together, and were both part of the House of Edwards. And if all that isn't enough, they also moved in together. Now that is true friendship goals. I think, you know, yeah, I, I do. I feel that our friendship has come a long way, friends, since we first saw each other on the show. Now I, I honestly feel like we're, we're growing up together. We are. You know, we, we're building our own home and we're, things are coming our way, you know? Number 16, Adore Delano and Bianca Del Rio. Who could forget this unstoppable duo? Adore, I'm really nervous because I think you can see your dirty pantyhose. <laughs> Adore Delano was the wild child and Bianca Del Rio the professional veteran, proving that sometimes opposites really do attract. She's everything I want to be when I'm 57. <laughs> it's just gonna kill me. After Adore had been told by the judges to start cinching her waist, Bianca showed her softer side when she let Adore borrow one of her corsets for a runway look. And so began a long mother and daughter style friendship that only got more adorable as the season continued. Adore, 
Yes, baby? If you don't want to get yelled at by Michelle, because didn't she tell you last time that you needed to be cinched? Yeah. I, and don't tell anybody that I'm being kind, but I have another cincher if you want me to lace you in it. I'm um, down. Adore's raw natural talent complimented Bianca's sharp and refined professionalism, helping them both to land a spot in the finale, as well as a friendship that we hope will last forever. Party. You're like evil nice. Like, what's with that? It's like, you can't hate you because you're helpful and you're sweet, but you're truthful, but you're a dick. Now, if you'd have said this on day one, I'd have been your friend. It's amazing we get this close and you're leaving today. What? <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, Manila Luzon and Latrice Royale. After being shackled together in the maligned pairs twist on All Stars 1, Manila and Latrice tried to make the best of the situation. Oh my god, what just happened? What is going on? Despite getting eliminated in week three of the competition, Team Latrilla was cemented from then on. Soon after getting chopped from All Stars, the two released a fun single called The Chop, and they later went on to start a podcast of the same name. We were also treated to even more shenanigans when the two returned for All Stars 4 in 2018. It's clear their friendship has only grown since those early days. This was never clearer than the episode where Latrice went home. I love you, Latrice. I love you too. Number 14, Mistress Isabel Brooks and Sugar and Spice. When the TikTok twins came into the workroom with their high energy, few fans thought the fierce and ferocious mistress of all people would take them so well. When the twins walk in, I gagged. I think they're very annoying. But as season 15 progressed, the twins proved to be worthy competitors, and Mistress warmed up quickly. She became like a den mother, taking them under her wing and giving them advice when needed. You do not let a bitch step over you, you clock them the first time so they won't ever do it again. And while unexpected, it was a bond that was really nice to see. Mistress later revealed that she had officially adopted Sugar and Spice into her prestigious drag family, and we absolutely love to see it. Number 13, The Heathers. Clearly there's two cliques going on, and one of the cliques is Shangela's Handmaidens. Love them or loathe them, drag queen cliques have been keeping us entertained since season three, when BFF troupe The Heathers was formed. Carmen, Manila, Delta, and myself have decided to call each other Heather because we formed this clique which looks a lot like the movie Heathers. We're basically the pretty girls, the top four, and then there's the other girls. This fierce foursome consisted of Raja, Manila Luzon, Delta Work, and Carmen Carrera, who bonded over slaying the runway with their couture looks and stunning makeup. However, as all Drag Race fans know, cliques don't often come without drama, and most of the season's drama was between the Heathers and the group they shadily named the Boogers. Honestly, because I, I heard it like three times today, you guys are saying, oh, well, we're, we're calling you Boogers so that we can feel better about ourselves. I don't think that's what it was at all. But why did you, you call us the Boogers? Because it's not shady, it's funny. It's just for to you. Fun. When you have fun but if you thing. take it that personal, that's your insecurity. It all came to a head in the reunion episode. Despite the controversy, they stayed close after their season ended, touring the world together and even releasing a Lady Marmalade cover. Number 12, Rosé and Denali. The ice skating princess warmed up quickly to the fiery Scottish queen. Rosé and Denali had a great rapport from the beginning of season 13. Can you say mine? Denali. Oh, that's cute! Ah. Their flirtatious friendship captivated and delighted audiences. Sharing tender and intimate moments in Untucked, their growing bond practically sent fans into a frenzy of speculation, fantasy, and fan fiction. And the two seemed happy to play into it every chance they got. You don't have to There's look at me. You want to know why? You want to know why you don't have to look at me? Why? Because you're going to have a lot of time to look at me. Although they ultimately assured everyone that they were just close friends, they still like to throw a bone to the Rose Nolly shippers every now and then. And though there is no romance, their friendship is nothing short of lovely. Number 11, Alaska and Willem. Alaska and Willem did not compete on the same season of Drag Race, but they still feel like old friends. Their personalities complement each other so well. Because 2023 for me is going to be all about... Um, Modesty? Help. No. Uh, no. Willem is the firebrand who takes no prisoners and has no filter, and Alaska is the slightly more diplomatic of the pair with a more subtle sense of humor. Since 2018, they've co-hosted the boundary-pushing and tea-spilling podcast Race Chaser. 
Which elimination was the worst choice Rue ever made? Yeah, when she uh, fired Matthew. I thought that was a bad choice. <laughs> that was her makeup artist. They've used their platform to highlight both the queens of Drag Race and the production hijinks involved in making the show happen. And not that there was ever any doubt, but they know how to keep people entertained. Who would think to be dishonest on a reality show? In front of the camera or behind? Number 10, Shea Coulee and Sasha Velour. You know, I agree. I love eating chocolate. Sasha, <laughs> do you have a solution for people who love to eat dessert but hate waiting to the end of the meal? This adorable friendship started when these queens paired up to win not just one, but two challenges on season nine, cementing their place in the finale and bonding them as drag sisters for life. <laughs> Sasha and I are really leaning on each other. We're having fun. The jokes are landing. It feels right. Shay and Sasha gelled seamlessly on tasks and challenges, both being fierce fashion queens with a quirky sense of humor and likable vibe. Yes! We the dream team. Oh my god. It's actually amazing to win working with Shay again. They left us feeling so emotional during their lip sync in the grand finale, battling it out in one of the most iconic performances in Drag Race history. off the show, they are still just as cute as ever, whether they're going on tour together or just having a good old kiki on YouTube. Another favorite moment was when Bakule's hair fell in her face, and I was like, she has vulnerability! <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna do bad, finally! Number 9, Rulaska Talks. Rulaska Talks! This formidable trio left us obsessing over more than just their runway looks. First starring in season five, this clique combined Roxy's polished beauty prowess, Detox's fashion expertise, and Alaska's hilarious creativity to create a seemingly unbeatable girl group who dominated the competition until the lovable Jinx Monsoon snatched the crown. Just tuck your junk and hit that runway. It'll get better someday. met again in All Stars 2, they insisted that Relaska Talks was out of action. So I don't want us to get f***ing all comfortable. However, the All Stars twist meant the challenge winning queens would decide which competitor would sashay away, leaving a lot of opportunities for the trio to show us that after all is said and done, best friends still come first. It shows up with, I'm sorry, I can't listen to the okay. oh, I'm so sorry, but I just couldn't send Roxy home today because she's been so amazing and I do it. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Number eight, Yara Sofia and Alexis Mateo. These Puerto Rican beauties gifted us one of the purest sisterhoods in Drag Race history. What's going on? I want to go. I want to go. Why? I see because you're stupid. Huh? If you're if you're not doing it well. Yara and Alexis were both absolute sweethearts, yet cutthroat competitors. We loved watching them support each other through every challenge, and they created iconic characters who slayed the competition, both making the top four. And you all know I didn't came here to clean toilets, baby, so I became a stripper, baby! <laughs> yes, ma'am, honey, if it got give it to you, baby, you better make some money. Sadly, our hearts broke when they had to lip sync against each other, leading to Yada's gutting on-screen breakdown. I'm crying because there's a lot of emotions. I was thinking too much. I'm so angry and I'm so disappointed. I'm a mess. However, this friendship was far from over. After teaming up in All Stars 1, they proved their friendship had survived the drama of Drag Race. Jara Sophia and Alexis Mateo. Let's go, I'm gonna bring you <laughs> feature. Number seven, Priyanka and Lemon. Canada's Drag Race introduced a lot of fresh and fabulous friendships to the franchise. But the incredibly shady and hilarious BFFdom of season one winner Priyanka and fifth place finisher Lemon takes the cake. Uh, Priyanka, you talk about having sex a lot, but the only thing you're f***ing is stupid. <laughs> Priyanka's chaotic energy meshed so well with Lemon's unwavering confidence that fans were excited to watch them interact week to week. Like any deep and meaningful friendship, theirs is based mostly on insults. 
All in good fun, of course. Drag has changed since when you and I did Drag Race, but your drag just hasn't changed and it's still ugly. Since the show, they've collaborated on original music and other projects, often continuing to take jabs and pretend they cannot stand the sight of each other. It's pretty adorable. We're coming on through, coming on through, coming for you. Come through. Number six, Willow Pill and Cornbread the Snack Jeté. Few Drag Race friendships warmed our hearts like this one. One of the loveliest moments of season 14 came during the week three ball challenge. Just take a deep breath. You got it, baby. Don't work yourself. Willow Pill, who lives with cystinosis, was having issues using her hands to sew her looks. And Cornbread the Snack Jeté came to her rescue. The two queens epitomized trans excellence, and their connection only seemed to deepen once Willow came out as trans femme while the season was airing. The friendship is so deep that Cornbread even revealed that she got a tattoo of Willow. Now that might be a first for Drag Race BFFs, but it's also one of the most beautifully meaningful things we've ever heard. Number 5. Simone and Gigi Good. The winner of season 13 and the runner-up of season 12 have a close friendship that existed before either one appeared on RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know, does your favorite color fluctuate? Mine does. Mine always. does, yes. Gigi Good has ties to Simone's drag collective, the House of Avalon. And according to the pair, they had an instant connection when they met. In the years since, they've cheered each other on during their respective drag race seasons and have been seen attending events and fashion shows together. Their close friendship may slip by more casual fans' attention, but there's no denying it is an absolutely epic one that warms our hearts. I haven't been on a stage with an audience since my season, so I'm ready to feel what it's like. It's amazing. Number 4. Violet Chachki and Gottmik As the resident fashion queens of their respective seasons, Violet Chachki and Gottmik know a thing or two about what looks good and what doesn't. You don't think that's a two? I just said it was a two. On their podcast, No Gorge, the two deliver their deliciously catty commentary on fashion, life, and show business. It's kind of rare to see queens from seasons so far apart become this close, but witnessing what these two share, we wish it happened more often. Balenciaga did his campaign. How could you not know what's going on? Who knows who our listeners are? These performers reportedly became BFFs after touring together, and it seems the podcast was born out of their natural rapport. If you ask us, their chemistry is too easy and natural to deny. Bye, Gorge. Bye, Gorge. Number 3. Jinx Monsoon and Ben De La Creme These two queens from dovetailing seasons have a lot in common. They're based in the same city, they both won the Snatch Game, and their drag is often inspired by more old-school references. I don't have a single idea who any of these people are. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, their infectious and goofy energy has always been a hit with Drag Race fans. Outside the show, the Seattle sisters have proven to be a dynamic duo of musical comedy with a slew of sold-out shows. The filmed version of their holiday special also proved incredibly popular, and it's easy to see why. What makes them uniquely powerful is that they really do seem like two peas in a pod. You're a drag queen. A what? Number 2. Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange How many other BFFs can say their friendship has been immortalized on The Simpsons? This is Waffle House, mama. The Waffle House. Waffle. Wow. Fall to the house, house, walk to the cat to the house, how? While Monet found a forever friend in All Stars 4 twinner Trinity the Tuck, we have to spotlight her friendship with Bob. Sibling rivalry is the perfect podcast title for this duo. These people were sad, <laughs> miserable people, and then we got a hold of them. Now look at them. Queens Bob the Drag Queen and Monet Exchange seem to spend much of their time butting heads or insulting each other the way real sisters do. Plus, they're refreshingly honest with one another. Yet all the while, their friendship is so real that nothing ever feels mean-spirited. And it's clear that Monet is never far from Bob's mind. It's a win-win! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Katya Zamalachkova and Trixie Mattel Katya's quirky sense of humor and vulnerability earned her more than her share of friends on season 7. You are loved. You are loved. Trixie and Katya gave us life, but their friendship really touched our hearts when they started their YouTube series, Uh, where they talk about whatever they want because it's their show. And not yours. No. It's the next best thing to actually hanging out with these hilarious queens. They're also super supportive of each other's successes, and we love watching them rib each other on Twitter like true besties. 
They even had their own TV show, making them not just BFFs, but a true power couple in our eyes. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is the room where we shine. <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.